followers are here to welcome in this world, to embrace it, to accept it. And I don't know how many of you will add on to your nativity sets, but I do hope that you will read the Christmas story with fresh Middle Eastern eyes. If you ask me who the living God is and what is he like, is he allowed his son to be born with family all around? A lot of family. Because the kingdom of God is about community. The kingdom of lighting lights in this world, pushing back the darkness because of the way of Jesus and making him known to others. This month, we started the passage from Isaiah 9. We'll look at it once again. Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. For his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And this is why we celebrate the birth of Jesus. For government of peace, that will have no end. I love that all through scripture, that we're not merely be meant to receive the righteousness of Jesus. We're meant to be his agency, trying to figure out what to do with our life for the kingdom of God, to be his justice and his righteousness in the world to welcome all who will come to the wedding supper of the Lamb. That the people you know, those that cross your path, would understand that God has a table that is open to the entire world. Everyone is invited. The kingdom of God is about community. It's about family. It's been about family since the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago. The Gospel of Mark uses the word cataluma for the upper room, the upper room where Jesus and his disciples shared their last meal together. Selfless love is always costly. His faithful love endures forever. In just a few minutes, we're going to share communion together in remembrance of Jesus selfless love that he has offered to us. Today, today we remember his birth, his first advent, but we also look forward in great anticipation to a second coming, the second advent, when we will, he will return in the clouds east of Mount Zion, and the trumpets will sound. And as I close today, I would like to remind us of something that we heard um, in our Sunday morning small group from J.D. He was as a study of Romans 5. He said, Christians are not Stoics. Stoics are unmoved by pain. Stoics are detached. That's Buddhism, not Christianity. Buddhism teaches you not to feel pain by detaching yourself from the world and not really loving anything. But Christianity pushes you into the world to experience it, to love it, and feel its pain more deeply. The Apostle Paul tells us it's okay to feel the pain. We should feel the pain because selfless love is costly. But his faithful love endures forever. Trust God because you know that even in those most painful times, God is up to something ultimately for your good. Hebrews 13, 5 says, he will never leave you or forsake you, even in difficult times. Romans 5, 5 uh, says, the hope will not disappoint us. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out to me, to me, in our hearts through the gospel. And at the right time, at the right time, Christ died for us. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God laying down his life for us. That is not like me laying down my life for my kids. Because it says in verse 10, I was God's enemy. And God laid down his life for us not when I was good or a just person, nor were you. <laughs> we were his enemy. 
It would be like me laying down my life for a terrorist that murdered my child. Imagine the terrorist murdered one of my children. He then was sentenced to life in prison. I showed up at the trial, and I offered to take his place and give him all my fortune so he could go home to his children and start his life over. And we say, who in the world? Who in the world would do that? No one on earth in this world would do that. But God did. He did that to make us his sons and his daughters, to include us in his family. Verse 9 says, Much more than since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from wrath. For if, while we were his enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Saved by his life means if by the blood of his death secured my forgiveness, then the fact that he lives and stands as my advocate beside God the Father guarantees that he will watch over me and you in every trial we have in our life and produce good, that he will never give up on me. He will never give up on you. He transforms us, everything that the enemy means for harm, he will turn for good. Oswald Chambers says it like this in closing, what the world needs is not a little bit of love, but major surgery. When you find yourself face to face with a person who is spiritually lost, remind yourself of Jesus Christ on the cross. If that person can get to God any other way, then the cross of Christ is unnecessary. If you think you are helping the lost person with your sympathy and understanding, you are a traitor to Jesus Christ. You must have a right standing relationship with him yourself and pour out your life in helping others in this way not in a human way that ignores God over and over in the Bible we see God meeting people right where they are but never leaving them there when God intervenes in a human life there's change transformation and an invitation to journey together through life Jesus meets us right where we are and he takes us somewhere. He faithfully shepherds us to the very end of our life. This is a season of Advent, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. And the focus of Advent is really the second coming of Jesus. You and I are part of the New Testament church. We live in between the two Advents, the first Advent and the second Advent. We have the historical earthly life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. That's all behind us. And we're looking forward to the second coming where he's coming again so we can spend eternity with him. The Christmas story is about a family reunion. Beth Grant says church is family. It's just not an activity. We are family. This God's mighty little church is close to all of our hearts. It is family. Church is not an activity. It's family. It's strength. It's not perfect. None of us are perfect. But it's the best thing going on God's green earth because he is at work here in his church. At PCW, we offer open communion, which simply means if you are a Christ follower, we invite you to receive communion with us. And uh, I have, uh, Eric has helped me. We're going to, um, I'm going to read it just a little bit more, and then we'll pass out the elements, or maybe have you come get them. There's some on the back, and there's some on the front, but there's little wooden um, communion cups from Israel that I brought you. They're um, from you know, olive wood. So if you would like to take communion with us, uh, I think there's enough for everyone. If you would like, you may take, uh, receive communion and then take that cup 
um, home with you as a, as a remembrance, okay? So communion focuses on the body and the blood of Jesus, the new covenant Jesus gave us, his sacrifice for our salvation. And in all the busyness of Christmas, can we stop and think how Christ stepped in as our substitute? He didn't have to. He chose to. At any moment, he could have fled. At any moment, he could have called legions of angels to rescue him. Jesus tells us to examine ourselves. Is there anything that you might need to set right with God today? He went to the cross. He shed his blood for you and I so we can be forgiven. Free. (laughs) Free. Not only now, but for eternity. And when he saves us from sin, everything you've done wrong, every mistake, God forgives them and puts them in the sea of unforgetfulness. Because before we take communion, I would ask you just to close your eyes with me for just a minute. Think with me how much God loves you. How valuable and precious you are to him. He knew you before you were formed and how and exactly where you would be on this day. He knows the job you would have. He knows the family you would be surrounded with and how God says, I will be with you. I will be with you till the very end of the age. On the very night Jesus was betrayed, he told his best friends, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. He prayed three times that he would not have to go to the cross. Three times his father said no to his son so he could say yes to you and I. At this point, Jesus could have fled to the wilderness, called the angels, but instead he prayed, watched, and waited for the thorns, the beatings, the nails, the shame of the cross. He would carry for you and I. This all was before him, before we knew him. Romans 5, 8 says, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. If you have yet to make Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, I would say, let today be the day. It's childlike, it's simple. All you really have to do is ask, be willing to surrender. And if you'd like, let's just say a salvation prayer before we uh, pass out the elements. And if you would, let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. That you were resurrected to give me life, eternal life. I accept your love. I accept you as Lord and Savior. As you forgive my sins, help me to live and follow you all the days of my life. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Sandy's going to come, and we're going to uh, stand and sing Silent Night. And uh, during that time, if you would like to take communion, uh, you can go to the back or you can come to the front and um, get the elements and just hold them and then we'll take them together. So if you'd like to stand and uh, while we sing, I'll just hold this and you can come get some. Can you do that?
26, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you went to the cross, that your body was broken, was beaten, unrecognizable for us, to save us. Lord, we thank you today on the day that we celebrate your birth. We celebrate you that you come as a child. You are our Savior. You are our Redeemer. That you also went with one purpose, to save us, that we may have life forever, that we don't have to live in our bondage, that we don't have to live in our yuck, that we don't have to live in our, in our filth. That everything that we go through, you go before us because your faithful love endures forever. Your faithful love endures forever. We thank you, God. We praise you in your mighty name. Amen. Take the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup. This is my new covenant in my blood. This do, and as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed on the cross. We look forward to the day when you will return to your second coming. pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would go with us, Lord, your people, Lord, those who are traveling. I ask that you would grant them uh, traveling mercies. Lord, those who are struggling in their bodies of sickness, Lord God, would you be ever close to them during this time? Those who are mourning the loss of somebody who's not at the table or around the tree this year, God, would you be close to them? God, you are faithful forever faithful. Your love endures no matter the circumstances that we go through, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the trial is. We know that we can call out your name. We can say, Yeshua, Yeshua, we need you, Lord. We need you. Come close, come near. We can enter into the throne room. 
at just the call of your name. So God, I thank you that uh, your people have chosen today to honor you, to meet together in community. May we feel your love, may we feel the love of each other. May we realize that you were born in community in a great family reunion. And that is our example as well, that once we are uh, yours, that we reach out to others, those that might not know you, those that might not know the way, those that are struggling. God, open our eyes today to see with your eyes, to hear with your ears, to love with your heart beyond ourselves. Lord, may our love also endure. God, I thank you. I praise you. I love you. I honor you today. We thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.